All right, guys, so how's it been going so far with playing Pat Metheny's Solo 4, Have You Heard? If you haven't watched part one of this, uh, obviously check that out first because part two is gonna get really busy. So we are about a third into the solo, so let's move on and check out the next part. Okay, guys, so the next part is a little difficult to hear on the original recording, but I'm pretty sure it starts uh, something like this. <laughs> So what's happening here? You know, first of all, we're coming from a B flat seven or B flat seven sus four and are targeting an A flat seven sus four chord. Yeah, now before we're going into the A flat seven, uh, we are playing a quick approach line from a half step above into the A flat seven to spice up the transition a bit more. Yeah, so he's probably thinking A A seven before the A flat seven. Now again, I will not go into too much detail about the scale and note choices here in these videos, so let's get back to how, how to actually play this. So every time we have a simple major triad, like in this case uh, A, uh, he would usually play the first notes with two downstrokes. Downstrokes, right? So we would have down, down, hammer, down, pull, down, pull, down, hammer, down, hammer, down, hammer, down, slide, down, pull, hammer and from nowhere. And then we have some upstrokes. Or down even if you want there. Um, down, up, down, pull, hammer on from nowhere. And the next one's up to you again, right? But then switch it back to down, pull, and these ones up to you. So one more time maybe. Down, down, hammer, down, pull, down, pull, down, hammer, down, hammer, down, hammer, down, slide, down, pull, hammer from nowhere, up, X would be down, up, down, pull, hammer, and down. The next phrase is a perfect example where the inverted right hand picking technique should work like a charm. Yeah, and you really should feel the difference once you're getting used to this. So he's probably thinking A flat, mixolydian and sharp 11 or something. Uh, before going into the G7 flat 13, since this is uh, similar to a minor blues progression, right? So we're going to have down, hammer, down, slide, down, hammer, down, pull off, hammer on from nowhere, up, down, hammer, down, hammer, down, up, down, pull, uh, ring finger slide, uh, down, pull, hammer on from nowhere, up, and here comes down, pull, down, pull, hammer on from nowhere, uh, up, down, pull, down, pull, and hammer back on. Uh, then we are at up, down, pull, down, pull, hammer on from nowhere, and then start with up, down, pull, down, pull, down again, and pull. And that last little part is the same pattern, right? So up, down, pull, down, pull, down, If you are having trouble following the topics in this video, or you feel that you are missing some pieces to the puzzle to integrate all of this into your playing, then I would highly recommend that you check out my online courses. 
Sure, you can learn a lick on YouTube here and there and do some cobbling together. But if you don't have an understanding how all these pieces work together, then none of this will do or move the needle in your guitar playing and everything will end up as a drop in the ocean. Don't be just a lifestyle guitar player who watches video after video for entertainment without ever getting anywhere. So treat your passion like a pro. At the end of the day, we all want to see real progress and know that we are on our path. And I will try my best to provide you with free content on here as much as possible. But if you are serious about evolving into a more advanced player, then I can't stress enough to you to join one of my online courses. I'll be with you every step of the way to help you finally unleash your full potential and you can find the links in the description down below. Check out anrimaruyama.com to learn more about my online courses. So maybe one more time, so we had... <laughs> third here of C minor 7 uh, I mean this is a great phrase over just a simple C minor 7 chord right this chord shape here that at this point I think we have all seen before uh, so add this phrase maybe to your inspiration list right sorry Before we go into bar uh, 39, you will find another great example of how to combine and mix um, these little tricks I talked about in my technique videos of Pat. Yeah? So we would start with up, down, pull, down, pull, hammer on from nowhere, and then continue this pattern. So up, down, pull, down, pull, hammer on from nowhere. Then we have an up stroke, down, hammer, down, um, let's do it up, down, pull, hammer from nowhere, down, hammer from nowhere, and the last arc to you. So I hope that at this point you really feel how much more relaxed and easier this feels than doing it the conventional way yeah i mean don't get me wrong it's still difficult in advance but maybe not as impossible as it might have seemed in the beginning yeah um, before we untangled all of this here and then we are again at the a flat 7 going to the g7 chord right but this time we switch the phrase up a little bit different so... <laughs> start with down hammer down hammer down uh, hammer down slide down pull hammer on from nowhere and this one is up down hammer uh, down hammer again oh uh, down and let's do this one up this brings us to the next position right and then we have down hammer down, pull, down, slide that, down, pull, hammer on from nowhere, and then we are on this whole section of... So this whole section where the whole minor chords move up a half step, um, none of our guidelines and technique tricks are going to work for these things, so I guess for the next four or five bars, you just have to hold your breath, I think, there for a second. But once we get out of this whole section uh, and we get to the F-sharp minor in bar 49, I would say this is all upstrokes. I mean... Maybe the, not the last four or five notes, but the beginning of this whole thing. And 
And after that, we go to a very similar phrase uh, for the A7 going to the G7 as uh, a little earlier, right? And there's just a few notes that he changes, but it's almost the same. So that same goes also for our right hand. So, so if you already practiced the previous phrase, um, this should be actually a little easier. <laughs> So we would have down, down, hammer, down, pull, down, pull, down, hammer, down, hammer, down, pull, hammer from nowhere, down, hammer, down, down, slide, down, hammer, down, up, down, pull, down, slide, down, pull, hammer from nowhere, and then up, down, pull, down, pull, down, pull, hammer on from nowhere. And then we are in this whole next section. Yeah. Maybe one more time in context. this whole um, minor section here of the C-sharp minor like this. Yeah, this whole part, um, obviously it's pretty hard to memorize all of these notes, obviously, but um, the one thing that you have to watch out for this is that to each one of these groups, the lower string is always used with a hammer-on from nowhere, and the rest is I would assume picked, yeah? So let's say for the first one, it would be down, up, down, hammer, right? Same goes for the next one, or the next one, right? So down, up, down, hammer, down, up, down, hammer, down, up, down, hammer, and, and so on. Now, as I've said before, I've watched a ton of live footage zoomed in and in slow motion, and I don't see him sweeping here anything or doing economy picking in his right hands. I mean, the notes that he's plucking, right? So it looks to me always like down, up, down, and then the hammer on from nowhere on the lower string is definitely there, yeah? But correct me if I'm wrong, if he sweeps something in there, um, I would like to know. So once you get out of this whole jungle of uh, notes, uh, after that, we're kind of at the last third of the solo and you will find long stretches of uh, single string playing where he plays melodious passages, right? Where everything is basically upstrokes. <laughs> There's nothing really new showing up, I would say, with techniques or so everything you should have seen somewhere here and there before. So if you got this far in the solo, um, the last third, uh, I think there shouldn't be any big problems coming anymore. anymore yeah? So if you came this far, the rest should be, you should be able to do by yourself, I would say. Let's just run through maybe a few of them, right? So once we get to bar uh, 60, right? This would be all up, I would say, right? This whole. And this lick you have seen before. And that lick 
could be even played with all upstrokes, right? This whole... And then you switch it back to all upstrokes because it's uh, melodious passages uh, on one st on single strings or on a single string. So as you can see, there's not really anything new coming. It's just a mix mixture again of all the little techniques uh, we did in the previous videos. You know? So um, if you come, if you came this far, you should be fine finishing this by yourself, I would say. All right, guys. So I hope I was able to help you a little bit with Pat Metheny's Have You Heard solo. Um, it's a great solo to get under your belt and to master as a Pat Metheny fan. So um, I wish you all the best for the practicing sessions and I see you in one of the next videos.